I'm Jersey Drozd, and what I have for you today is a quick little mini tutorial on how to convert line art into non-photo blue line art on the computer. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, if any of you have penciled your own comics before, you know that can be very labor-intensive. You spend a lot of time on it, and uh, if you ink right on top of those pencils, uh, you can find yourself in a situation where you may mess up or spill the ink bottle over top of your pencils and you have to start all over. Now, some people solve this problem by using a light box, but I personally don't like using the light box uh, as a tool. I like drawing on my desk. So what I've done as an answer to that is I digitize my line art and uh, by scanning it in and taking it into Adobe Photoshop and turning the line art into non-photo blue lines. And then I can print out onto Bristol off of my regular inkjet printer. Uh, I just have like a DeskJet 5550, it's an old one. Uh, I just run uh, just a blank piece of Bristol through, pr uh, print it out in uh, the blue lines and I can ink it as many times as I want. Uh, this can give you lots and lots of original artwork or if you have a make a mistake on the art, uh, you spill the ink bottle onto your uh, artwork, uh, no problem, just print out another one. And it also means that you have more original art when you're done. You'll have the penciled version and the inked version when you're done. So it's very handy. It allows you to uh, have lots and lots of backups of your, of your artwork. Uh, so where do we start? Well, we start with this image here. Uh, this is uh, a scan I did. And I scan my images at 600 DPI, at least 300 DPI. And I scan them in grayscale. Reason why is uh, what we're about to do is it's going to affect the color of all those pixels. And uh, when I do my initial under sketches uh, before I go into the graphite penciling, I use a non-photo blue pencil there. And if you scan in color, it will pick up those non-photo blue lines. Uh, but if you've scanned in grayscale, it's go go going to mostly pick up the graphite lines. Uh, so I take this grayscale image at three to 600 DPI or more if your computer can handle it. And we're going to create what's called a duotone. And uh, without you know going into a deep technical explanation of what that is, uh, it, it essentially just converts all of what's gray into whatever color I tell it to. So for that, we go into, here's it just opened up the, the scan file. And uh, if, if you need to clean it up, you can. Uh, then you go to image, mode, duotone. And this dialog box appears. Now, Duotone gives you a bunch of different settings. Uh, it, it, in your version of Photoshop, this is Adobe Photoshop CS4, it might be set to uh, the type set to Duotone, and you can set a bunch of different colors that will interact with each other. Uh, like so, you can do a tritone and add lots more colors that will all interact on your image. But we just want a monotone. And for the monotone, uh, it gives you this option here for your first ink color. And what we're going to do is just tap on that, and this dialog box appears. Now we're going to go down over here to our CMYK values over in the bottom right, and you're going to set the C for cyan to 30%. Um, you can adjust that later if you want, but just, we'll just do 30% as an example. And then magenta, magenta to zero, tab down or click down to yellow, set that to zero, and black set to zero. And you can see that the ink color here uh, is roughly 30% cyan. You hit OK, and then hit OK out of that. And now all of our line art has been converted to essentially non-photo blue, uh, meaning that if I print this out on a piece of Bristol and ink over top of it, I can scan it, and with a quick switch of, uh, of playing around with the levels or the, uh, the threshold uh, after I've scanned it, I can knock out all that blue, and only the ink lines will show. Now, when you use the duotone mode, let's go back in the history palette to when I opened it. When you go back to duotone, this cyan value, you can adjust it to whatever you think is best. You can go 50% cyan if you want, if you're worried about the darkness of the lines not showing up. If you're worried about losing some of this detail and not being able to see it afterwards, you can set it at a higher value. But the higher value you set the cyan to, the more difficult it's going to be to get those blue lines to vanish when you've scanned the inked image. So I usually go around between 25 to 30 percent for my cyan value. And you can save this file as a Photoshop file on your system and save it indefinitely to print out again and again and again as many times as you need it. So that's that for Photoshop. What about Adobe Photoshop Elements?
Now we're going to do this in Adobe Photoshop Elements, which is a little different than regular Adobe Photoshop. There's a little bit of a workaround involved, and it doesn't quite make your image a duotone, but it achieves the exact same effect uh, for our purposes here. Now, uh, like I said before, you want to scan your image in uh, at least 300 dpi grayscale, and then uh, preferably a little higher than 300 dpi. I usually go 600 dpi. Uh, and we're going to open this up in Adobe Photoshop Elements. And this is where it's going to seem a little backwards. We're going to convert this grayscale image to an RGB image. But there's a reason why you want to do that. You want all of the line art to be in just black and white pixels to start with before you convert it to RGB. So first to convert it, we go up to Image, Mode, RGB Color. And it takes a second, and then it's converted. Now we're going to apply what's called a layer effect to this line art to turn it into cyan pixels so when we print it out we can ink it with impunity so for that we go to layer new adjustment layer hue saturation and we click on that and we get this dialog box that pops up and we can call this layer whatever we want but we'll just call this hue saturation one because it really doesn't matter because once we're done with this file we're just going to dump it once we print out the, the hard copy or rather we'll just save it but we won't really need to mess around with a whole lot of layers in this file so we hit okay and then this dialog box pops up. Now here are the settings that I found uh, that match as close as possible to the duotone effect in regular Adobe Photoshop. So first we want to click the colorize box and we'll notice that it automatically starts applying the color to our line art. And for hue, we want it to be 200. And you can see we can move the slider around and it'll apply all sorts of different shades to our line art. But what I found is that 200 works about the best you're going to get to get this cyan look. For the saturation, we want to go all the way over to the right. So 100 for the saturation. And then we want to lighten it a little bit. Because you can see this isn't quite, this is a little dark. This is, this is going to show up if we scan this line art later on, even if we ink over top of it. So we want to set the lightness to somewhere between 80 and 90. If you see, if I switch it to 80, now it looks like the duotone effect I did on the same image beforehand. So, okay, well, I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, you can reach me at comicsaregreat.com. There's a great uh, link at the top of the page uh, that says contact. Where you can ask me any questions. I'll be glad to help you out in any way I can with uh, these comics pursuits. So thanks for watching. I've been Jersey Drozd, uh, comicsaregreat.com. Okay, bye.